So, the 1660 Ti is out. It's called the 1660 Ti, and everybody wonders why it's called the 1660 Ti. And by the end of this video, I intend to prove to you the reasons why NVIDIA called, the 16, called it the 1660 Ti. I thought it was funny watching all the reviewers and their reviews of it, and how, you know, it's kind of... Some people are happy with it, some people are unhappy with it, some people like the performance of it, some people don't like the performance of it. I mean, let's be honest, most people do like the performance of it, because we've been stuck in this kind of market where um, we've got nothing really from AMD other than a 700 quid card that let's be honest let's be frank and um, unless you overclock it doesn't really beat an RTX 2080 and um, then you can argue well then a really good overclocking 2080 probably pulls right back to beside it and has all the RTX features which is just another stick to beat AMD about the headway um, even though nobody really cares about them and everybody knocks this shit off and let's be honest you're probably just going to turn it on to see what it looks like and then go do you know what actually it's not worth the performance hit and turn it back off again that's genuinely what RTX is at the moment and we can all say that we're looking forward to it or blah 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 but we have to talk in truth and we live in the real, real world here where things aren't that simple you know what I mean things are just either it's a good it's a good technology or it's not a good technology or there's a bit of gray in the middle where it's uh, it could be a good technology in the future but i don't live on promises right i live on what's actually actually real and what's actually true and the truth is that the radeon 7 is about as good as an rtx 2080 and costs about the same on average and um, the truth though is that you can't get a radeon 7 at the moment because they're sold out everywhere is that because the card is selling really well or is that because there's fuck all stock I would veer across the stage that does fuck all stock and that's the scenario we live in they gave us an or uh, an rx 590 which i said at launch and i bought one and i reviewed it here's my box here i've since sold it but i kept the box um is that that card basically was a stupid card is what i said i said it performed very well and that if you're going to buy a gtx 1060 because everybody was everybody and their mother was buying gtx 1060s that's stupid because they're about the same price um so if you were going to buy a gtx 1060 you shouldn't you should buy an rx 590 but you should always have bought, been buying an rx 580 in the first place and still that remains the case kind of in there on the 200 dollar mark the only real choice for you around the 200 dollar marks an rx 580 because it's slightly faster than a 1060 and it's cheaper and that's the world we live in i'm not going to sugarcoat things and try to play sides and tell you what which way you should go if you really 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 like your g-sync monitor that runs at 144 hertz and you have no other choice but to buy an nvidia card well then buy a gtx 1060 it's a very good card or buy the 1660 ti because in fact it's a 1070 that's what it is right it's a 1070 with two gigabytes less of vram and people are not not making a mu as much of a deal i think about the vram as they should vram is very important vram is not important when you have enough of it but when you don't have enough of it that's when it becomes an absolute clusterfuck that's when your frame rate goes out the window goes down to nothing and the gtx 1070 begins to beat the rtx 20 uh, the rtx the 1660 ti now the 1660 ti is called the 1660 ti for one reason and only one reason only it's a tiny tiny die it's about 280 millimeter squared 290 millimeter squared which is the smallest touring die out there right and um, it has six gigabytes of ram because nvidia wanted to cut corners as much as they could so they could sell you a car card and make their 60% profit margin because that's what they're making so if you want to know how much these cards cost I'd say to die because they're using a really really old process 12 nanometer process which is essentially just a 14 nanometer process wrapped up in a new name it's essentially 14 nanometers and 14 nanometers is fucking two years old now so it's a really mature process which means that your yield is much higher on that card and because your yield is much higher on that card if your die is really small and your yield is really really good then you can make a lot of these cards for really fucking cheap so like the die on this probably cost maybe 20 or 30 quid to make the whole card itself the pcb layout everything probably costs another 50 or 60 quid with a cooler and stuff like that on it and then you're talking about maybe 60 quid for 80 quid maximum for for memory so you're talking about what it's like maximum i'd say 150 quid to make it and they're charging double right essentially that uh, maximum so i would say it's probably more like 120 130 quid to make and they're making 60 percent pro profit margin if you ever want to know how much an nvidia card costs to make just take the card and subtract 60 percent from it and that's how, usually how much it, it costs to make uh uh an nvidia card you don't you don't really have to do much math it's well known that they make 60 percent profit margin they're more margins of 60 percent and i think that's extortionate and i think that um 
it's okay to make 60, 60, uh, 60% profit margin when you make an architecture like Pascal, which absolutely blasts everything out of the water so much faster than your previous architecture while you're shrinking your dies and you're making that really efficient Maxwell cores just hit massive clock speeds. But still, Pascal was too expensive and just essentially a, a price, a money grab anyway. And we've just seen that roll on over into the, the RTX cards. So the reason why the RTX 20, 2080 Ti costs fucking 1200 quid is because it probably costs NVIDIA like something stupid, like 600 quid to make that card, you know? And that's that's the reason why they have funky numbers in their memory. They've always had funky numbers in their memory. Like I remember the... the the GTX 260 had 898 or something megabytes of GDDR6. It's fucking ludicrous. But it's it's all to hit those profit margins. And, and AMD have no choice but to sell cards at really slim profit margins just to compete that because they're so far behind. The 1660 Ti though is <coughs> excuse me, a super efficient card that runs as fast as GTX 1070. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with the performance. The only problem I, may, I, I, am, I have with it is that it's 279 quid. And if we're really being frank here, I'm really talking about where this card should sit in the stack. It should have been called an RTX 2080, 2050, sorry. And it should have been around the 180 to 200 quid mark. And in that point, then I would be raving about this card and saying it's unbelievable. We've gotten two years, two years, sorry, nearly three years after the GTX is it even it's like three and a half years now three and a half years after the gtx 1070 was released we've gotten a card that's that's pretty much as fast as it while yes it's got a better memory architecture it's pretty much what amd did with, with fury when they went from gd when they went from gddr5 to hbm and because hbm was so expensive they went down to four gigabytes instead of eight gigabytes which everybody else was given at the time or six gigabytes so you, you, it's pretty much the same thing. You're, they're going to a new, faster memory. So it means that you don't, at that faster speeds, memory doesn't become that important until textures. So uh, you're more looking for the transfer between the memory being fast then you're looking for having a big swimming pool full of fucking textures that you can pick and choose from. Um, uh, but for me, the 1660 Ti, it's fast, but we have to talk in the real world and we have to talk about real truths here. This card was made to compete with the RX 590. It's the only reason why it work, why, it, why it, 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 it actually exists. If you look at the RX 590, the RX 590 sits somewhere between an RX 580 and a GTX uh, 1070. The GTX 1070 is a massively faster card. And this is just to blow it out of water. And that, that's why I'm so upset about the, the price of the, you can go back and watch my other videos on the RX 590. Uh, 590. I said, this card gives Nvidia the, the opportunity to release a card that that kills it because it will kill it with those touring cores it will absolutely kill it with no tensor cores no ray tracing cores it will absolutely demolish that card and it will be the same price if not a slightly bit bit more expensive i thought it genuinely would be about 300 quid and it's looking like if you want to buy one now you're probably paying more like 300 320 for one um but that look that's that's the way all cards launch they all launch slightly a bit above uh, msrp unless the company is under unbelievable pressure to get an msrp card out there like when they launched the whole rtx series and 2070 was coming out and they had to get one out of 500 dollars. if they didn't people just would fucking they did they just wouldn't like at 600 dollars it, it did it doesn't make sense and so they had two fucking uh rtx 2070s one that's really shit and performs about 10 percent slower than the one that's really fast uh, but the one that's really fast is fucking 600 quid, quid and, and has a better cooler it's mad but that's the scenario we live in. That's the place we live in now where you can't expect anymore because we don't have any competition. And people like, will, will, oh, but ain't nobody bought AMD cards when they were faster and cheaper. We got to let go of that now. Nobody does. That's the reality. And if AMD want to exist in this market, they're the ones that have to fix it. They're the ones that have to sort this shit out. They're the ones that are going to have to come up with a product that makes absolute, complete and utter sense for everybody. They're going to have to get DLSS and ray tracing, not because I want it or not because I'm impressed by it, because to be honest, I can't see it. I think everybody else has some special NVIDIA green glasses on that makes you be able to see the ray tracing and, and stuff in games. I genuinely can't tell the difference because I think game developers are so good at, at doing that anyway, that to me, 
the only card that makes sense now of the RTX series of cards is the one that doesn't actually have tensor cores and ray tracing. And even then, it's still, to me, I'm paying 279 quid for what would have been last generation of 50 card. Uh, you know, people are gonna, people are bitching them on and say, it's not, it's a new architecture, it's from the ground up. What you, you buy Nvidia's marketing if you want, right? But the reason why this card has a naming scheme that never never existed before, a nomenclature that never existed before, because they knew if they called it a 50 card and char charged 289 quid for it, the reviewers would fucking have a stick to beat them with. And they didn't want to give them that stick, so they called it some weird-ass fucking number. And they didn't want to call it 1160, because that seems like way too, too further down the stack from the 2060. So they wanted something closer to 20 series in, no in numbers. So, oh, it sits somewhere just above halfway from uh, my mic just fell from um from a, the 10 series and the 20 series so you're kind of sitting in the middle somewhere even a, but, but just slightly on on the side of the 20 series because let's be honest it has all of that asynchronous compute it has all of that ipc gains the touring has and it's an amazing performing card if this card was 230 or 240 quid we'd be all talking about it's price hike but it's so fast it's nearly worth it because to be honest gtx 1070 right now is so fast still to this day that um it, it's a good buy like it, it's it's a good buy if you, you go out there and you can get them for second hand for like 250 quid linus did in his review he said they were 300 quid and he's probably talking about retail and um, i don't know any retailers still selling the gtx 1070 if they're selling it for 300 quid yeah then you buy an rtx uh i say a gtx 16 60 ti because it's just it's just as fast and it's <laughs> It, it will get faster and that's the most important thing about touring is that it's a complete architecture change the pascal will soon become the kepler of this generation if you know anything about kepler kepler was a really fast architecture so much so that when the gtx 970 came out didn't really beat uh, a, a gtx 780 but the but that was okay because it cost 350 quid um, so you're getting $600 performance for 350 quid a year later. And everybody was okay with that. And the 980 didn't really beat a 780 Ti. But it was okay because you're getting more VRAM. And you're getting a, a card that essentially like could beat it if you overclocked it. And was about 450 quid. And we were like, this is fucking amazing. This is wonderful. And it was wonderful. Uh, that's what happens when Nvidia has a bit of heat on them. When when we've got an RX uh, R nine two ninety X that's beating your your Kepler generation or in and around their Kepler generation performance and so much cheaper, then they knew they had to pull it out of the park with Maxwell, Maxwell, and they did. They made these amazingly cool, wonderful, powerful, uh, really power efficient um, transistors for uh, Maxwell, and since then they've just ran with them. And there's something magic about the the NVIDIA transistors. I don't know what it is, but they hit really high clock speeds. They have really good IPC. Uh, NVIDIA's memory uh, compression and all that stuff is so much better than AMD's that they don't really have to give it mem massive memory buses. So their power efficiency on memory is so much better that they don't even have to think about using something that is as, as extravagantly, extravagantly expensive as, as HBM. And we should be grateful that they're not using HBM because if they were using HBM, yes, their cars would be faster, but also, their cards would be way more expensive. So, like, people who think that GDDR6 is so expensive, it, it, like, 80 quid for 8 gigs of, of GDDR5, it's probably more like 100 quid for, for GDDR6. It's not that much more expensive, right? It is a little bit more expensive, but it's not that much more expensive. So, the whole thing is that Kepler was, like, really, 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 really fast, and at launch the the nine series didn't really beat it but as games came out and driver drivers came out and 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 games could use this this, this really efficient uh, maxwell architecture the kepler cards just fell further and further and further behind and nvidia really stopped supporting it with driver updates and the reason why um you know it didn't really happen to maxwell is because pascal was just maxwell on speed so all of the performance increases you were getting was just from clock speed so even when they were given driver updates for pascal they, they kind of carried over to maxwell anyway uh, but touring has changed it up it's it's a different cache layout it's a different uh there's asynchronous compute in there so they can do uh integer performance as well as um you know float and front operations all at the same time so you've got this card that can do all of these things that pascal cards can't do so what you're going to see is those aspects of pascal or sorry of touring get faster over time while 
Maxwell not getting any of those improvements, or Maxwell and Pascal not getting any of those improvements because they don't have them. So yeah, the sixteen sixty Ti is too expensive. But I'm not I'm not as angry as I would when I normally come on and give you a big fucking screaming rant where I'd go, Aah! I just want you to know the truth. This is a fifty card. It's it's a fifty card. And, and, and Nvidia are so far ahead that a fifty card now has a twenty five percent performance increase on their previous generation's sixty card. Um it brings you right up towards a GTX ten seventy level of performance. And it's a hell of an overclocker by all of the by all of the, the, the benchmarks I've seen. It, it, it makes sense in a market where we don't get cards every year anymore. We get cards every three years. So uh, let's be honest, if this card was released, if, the, if there was, I, I can't even, I can't convey the idea because it's so hard to understand. The concept is so, like, three years, they had three years to develop this card and they only got 25% faster and the prices didn't really drop. So you would expect if you waited longer, you would get more of a performance increase. And like people are expecting uh, GTX 1880s and, and, and GTX uh, 1770s. And well, like those cards are either gonna exist or they're not gonna exist. And if they do exist, I think that they would, they're not going to be as cheap as you want them to be. Because if they're gonna be as cheap as you want them to be, then everybody will just buy those cards. So if they really are going to exist, they're only going to be 50 or 100 quid cheaper. And what Nvidia doing then is just saying, this is how much RTX cards cost, essentially. RTX costs an extra 100 quid on, on top. So for me, it's a bad business move either way for Nvidia to do that. So I, I really don't think we're going to do that. I think they probably had plans to do that in the past because you can see they have got the cores without the RT cores and the Tensor cores. They can do it. I really thought this card was just going to be uh, a 2060 cut down, but the die would still be the same. It would just be one that, like, you know, they lopped off bits that didn't work or that had errors on them doesn't seem to be that case it seems to be a card where it's completely from the ground up it's a tiny die uh, it just has all that stuff cut off so if they were in, in, in investing in just making a 1660 ti i don't think they would invest in a, in a, in a uh, low margin high markup uh as low margin high volume card if they weren't going to do a high margin low volume uh, <clears throat> so i think at some point maybe they were and i think it was probably to do with miners maybe so they had a, an architecture for miners and architecture for gamers. And maybe touring was gonna be the, I don't know, do tensor cores and RT cores work in mining? I know fuck all about mining since for years, I haven't done it in, in years. So if if the, the, the tensor cores and the, the RT cores could be leveraged as mining cards, then these were gonna be the mining cards. And that, that's why the MSRP was right. And then the other ones were gonna be the gaming cards. And they were gonna say, well, look, if you want a game on them as well, you can do that. And they, they have all this ray tracing or vice versa. So. The, well if the gaming with the rt cards you can do reflections and all that stuff and that's for gaming and then the, the we've got all this shit cut out for those who want to do mining and these are mining exclusive cards just so they could uh, segregate the market a bit and get people who are mining who who want mining cards to buy those and it kind of sheltered the gamers from that and in fairness if they, that was what they were doing that's really noble of them however I don't think that exists anymore and I don't think it makes sense for Nvidia to do that because there's no mining and the a gaming a, a gaming touring card without RT cores and tensor cores just would either make no sense to Nvidia now or it would be have to be so close in price like let's say an eleven eighty would would have the same performance without the RT cores and tensor cores. So it would have to be so close to that in performance or just to equal to that in performance but it couldn't be massively cheaper because then nobody would buy the rtx cards um or it just can't exist and i think that's the way nvidia are going with it they're definitely using the, that that architecture they developed for the low end because remember we heard these touring and ampere rumors that's what i'm talking about touring and ampere they had to uh at one point they were definitely deciding on to le releasing two architectures because we've heard that loads so the touring and ampere definitely ampere is the one without the the, the touring cards and the touring uh, the touring stuff like the the rte cores and the tensor cores and that's going to clearly be used for the low end so it's going to be used for 1660 ti 1660 and 1650 
um, and they're going to justify the the price hike of these massive dyes by saying that they're actually real competitors for the GTX 16, uh, GTX 1060, and you know, la la la. So we got to look at this about in, in one of two ways. Either this is a is really a 60 car, 60 competitor, and in that case, it's the kind of the lowest uh performance increase we've ever gotten from a from generation to generation which is 25 percent rather than 30 to 35 percent um or we got to look at it as that this is a really well performing 50 card that um nvidia have changed the name of uh, you pick your poison whichever one you want to believe uh, or if you just want to believe the nvidia marketing believe the nvidia marketing by all means it doesn't matter it doesn't make a fuck all difference to me i'm here to try and tell you what i see and i see a card that does well enough that you really can't say a bad word about it in the market that we exist in today but there is a navi on the way and all the rumors pointed to it being delayed but now the rumors are looking a lot more like uh, amd are really putting pressure on TSM tsmc to get that and get navi out in J june or july uh, but if they're putting putting pressure on them well, that tells me that yields are not going to be very good or they're not going to be the numbers of cards are not going to be as good as as we originally initially thought, which means the prices are going to be probably high anyway. And it's just this kind of uh, I, I don't know how I feel. I'm like, I, uh, I'm sitting in a world where people can sell fifty cards and they're so fast that we really can't argue about it. But remember the key points: three years late, um, it's only twenty five percent extra, not thirty five percent extra, which is what we used to get historically get. Well, we used to just historically used to get fucking 60 and 70 percent performance increases but i think those days are gone i think that's the way silicon is moving it's so hard to develop new processes and so hard to get extra performance out of silicon now and really uh, adding more stream processors or cuda cores doesn't really make your card that much faster so you've got a point where amd was able to release a radeon 7 with, with like um six less compute units and it'd be so much faster than a card with, with, with six more compute units under the same fucking architecture just because clock speed is more important than compute units once you get past a certain point uh like you know nvidia released um the the 2080 ti with so many more cuda cores than the 2080 and it's just not that much faster even though it's the fastest in the world but that's that's where i'm sitting i'm sorry for rambling but the 1660 ti me is a confusing one it's a one where if I was really sitting on 280 quid, I'd be left with no choice to buy that card, but I would really feel like it should be cheaper. Um, and that's where I sit on it. It's like kind of a, a not a disappointment, but not a like, woo, it's amazing. I think, if it, I think woo, it's amazing would have been 200 quid. Uh, it's a very good card, would have been 250 to 230 quid. And now that the, the, the 280 quid is like, yeah, the performance is there, but the price is not right it's so it's not that exorbitantly expensive that you're like fuck and it's just kind of the right price where you can you, you would like oh, pay 70 quid more to get an rtx 20 to 60 i'll probably just buy this one because 70 quid i could probably buy a better this that, or the other you know so yeah i think it's the the price is is the problem for me um as with every card in the last two years really price has been the problem um but let's be honest it's actually a better launch than this shit. And AMD fans, look, I bought one. You didn't buy one, if you're gonna bitch them out. I bought a Vega, two of them, in fact. You didn't buy one. So, bitch them out of me if you want, but I'm the one that supported the company. Bought a Radeon 7, you didn't buy one. So, if you're gonna bitch them out and say, oh, Paul, you're, you're such an NVIDIA fanboy because I said something nice about NVIDIA for the first time in God knows how long, and I wouldn't even call it nice, I'd say, meh, it, let's be honest this card is a fucking show compared to the rtx uh the gtx 1660 ti it's a it's an absolute disaster this card compared to that even now it's a 260 and it's still not a deal this card only makes sense now if they drop this card to 200 quid and get rid of the rx 580 i think they should just get rid of the rx 580 and call this the rx 580 and just fucking sell this for 200 quid because that's how much they would have to shave off the price to be honest to make it make it compelling now because that's how much faster the 1660 ti is and then this you're essentially buying a 1070 or buying 
uh, a slightly faster RX 580 that you probably could have got nearly as fast anyway if you just overclocked your RX 580 because overclocking RX 580s is pretty easy and they all seem to do just above 1400 megahertz nearly 1500 megahertz that card only does slightly above 1500 megahertz to 1600 megahertz so you're looking at 100 megahertz increase probably um versus an overclock with them and they don't overclock so that's fucking stupid it's just stupid it makes no sense so uh, and i said that at launch i said the problem with that card is that it doesn't cost 250 quid because nvidia is going to release a card that costs 300 quid that's going to beat it and if it costs 250 quid well then you have an argument that it's a bit cheaper but I didn't think that they would release the card at 280 quid. That beats it by so much. And it just beats it by so much. Anyway, that's for me. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. But if you disliked it, tell me why you disliked it. Because I can't fix it if I don't know what I did wrong. In the comments, let me know what you think. Are you happy with the 1660 Ti? Are you unhappy with the 1660 Ti? I'm happy with the performance. I'm not happy with the price. And I think that the die is so small. They could have sold it for way cheaper. They don't want to. And ultimately remember that it should not be our job to pay nvidia for the fuck up of not getting on a smaller node because their dies are so fucking big and here is a card that where they where they actually have a small die and they could sell it cheap and they don't want to and i'll talk to you in the next one lads don't forget to like comment share subscribe and all that jazz i'm gonna press this button stop recording